What's up, NZers? Hi, Hi, and welcome back to yet another family reaction video. This time we're going to head back to something a little more familiar, and that's something to do with the US military. Although I don't think it's something specifically to do with the military, it's kind of more like proposing a, uh, a situation, a hypothetical situation, and seeing if the current US military could defend an invasion of the homeland. <laughs> What do you guys reckon? Do you guys reckon they could? Yeah. I suppose they're going to get into the nitty gritty here, like they maybe might, like yeah. geography, budget, yeah. like everything. Yeah. Well, after what we saw from Five Reasons Not to Mess with America, there's yeah. no doubt they could. I know. Exactly. And also it depends who's invading them. That's true. So. That's true. We're going to have to wait and see what the video says. But okay. anyway, let's check it out. Cool. It's the early 1980s, and over the sky of the American heartland, Soviet and Cuban paratroopers begin to fall from the sky. In minutes, thousands of communist invaders have gained a foothold in the very heart of America. With World War III in full swing, it's up to a band of plucky teenagers to fight a guerrilla war against the godless commies. Wait, this is a movie. If you grew up in the 80s or just plain don't have bad taste in movies, then you're well aware of the action yeah. hit Red Dawn, a film that, that portrays a Soviet invasion of the United States toward the end of the Cold War. No, we're not talking about the remake. We don't speak of the remake. <laughs> but film aside, could it really happen? That question was asked by infographic show fan Blazik, who wanted to know if someone were to invade America, could the US pull all its forces home and hold out against a foreign invader? Despite what fiction like Red Dawn would have you believe, the United States was never in any danger of an invasion by the Soviet Union, mostly because the Russian people were about as interested in invading the US as Americans were in invading the Soviet Union. Of course, that didn't stop politicians and military officials on both sides using the fear of an evil capitalist or communist invasion from ballooning defense budgets. The saddest fact of the Cold War just might be that despite all the preparations to defend from an invasion by both sides, neither NATO nor the Soviet bloc ever had a single war plan drawn up for an actual preemptive invasion of the other's territory. <laughs> But another major reason why the U.S. was never under any threat of an invasion is due to its unique place in the world geography. In order for an enemy to get to America, first it must cross two massive oceans. And this geographic fact makes the United States the single most secure nation on Earth. Even today, moving troops and equipment across the oceans is a massive undertaking in terms of both logistics and cost, and very few nations are even capable of attempting the feat. But let's say that the two leading peer competitors to the U.S. decided to join forces and team up against the United States. With all troops returned home from overseas, could the U.S. defend itself against a double-sided assault against it by China and Russia? First, the two-power alliance would have to decide on where to strike. For an invasion to be successful, both nations would have to land troops as quickly as possible, and that would require the use of a working seaport. These ports would require good rail and road infrastructure, and must have deep water anchorages so that large cargo ships could dock and disgorge troops and heavy equipment. The need to take and hold major seaports is critical, as aside from a few token forces with a small number of fire support platforms, amphibious landings alone wouldn't be able to deliver firepower fast enough to secure a beachhead. In Normandy, during World War II, the success of the landings was largely down to a brilliant deception played out by the Allies, which saw the Nazis concentrate their forces at the wrong landing site. And even when the real landings happened a hundred miles away, Nazi commanders were so fooled by Allied intelligence that they ordered their forces to hold their position believing that the real assault was coming their way any day. The ruse, combined with some whopping tactical blunders by Hitler, allowed the Allies to quickly build a makeshift port facility which let Allied armor and artillery disembark. Had Hitler allowed his commanders to commit panzer reinforcements to the landings, Normandy would have likely ended as a complete catastrophe for the Allies. By the time he cleared reserve panzer units for the assault on the beachheads, Allied logistical units had already disembarked enough tanks to repel the assault. 
In an invasion of the U.S. homeland, such a ruse would be impossible to pull off. Long-range and satellite surveillance assets would see an invasion yeah. fleet days before it made landfall, That's and its target say. would be clearly known to the American defenders. Yeah. Therefore, China and Russia would have to act quickly and decisively, taking major seaports and holding them long enough to disembark a sizable expeditionary force able to repel American counter-assaults. For China, the only good options for unloading main battle tanks and mechanized artillery would be the ports in LA, Long Beach, Oakland, Tacoma, and Seattle. The LA Long Beach complex would be especially attractive as it's one of the world's largest ports and would allow Chinese forces to disembark very quickly. Unfortunately, these port facilities are also very close to several American air and naval bases, making them easily defended. Yep. The Seattle and Tacoma ports, however, are far more vulnerable, as only five major American bases are near these facilities. Landing in Washington, though, would mean Chinese forces would have to fight south and into California through easily defended and very mountainous terrain, a tactical nightmare for any Chinese commander. Russian invaders would face an even less enviable job. The American East Coast is home to far more numerous large port facilities, giving the Russian invasion force a greater number of targets to pick from. Unfortunately, the American East Coast is also the most heavily defended, with several dozen major military installations spread out from north to south. The East Coast is also home to America's largest military shipyards, which would be so heavily protected it would be suicidal to attempt a landing or assault against them. <laughs> Russia's best bet would be to attempt a landing in Mobile, Alabama, or Houston, Texas. This, however, would mean Russian forces would have to spend more time out at sea and move into the Gulf of Mexico, where they would be surrounded on all sides but the south by major American air bases. For Get both destroyed. our challengers, the tactical picture is mm -hmm. not looking very good, as the United States simply has no viable landing sites for a major expeditionary force that couldn't be easily defended. China and Russia could opt to coerce or bribe Mexico or Canada into allowing them to land at their facilities and launch an invasion into the U.S. itself. This would be by far the best strategic option for the invasion forces, but in response to the agreement between either nation and the Sino-Russian alliance, the United States would immediately begin a large-scale bombing campaign against port facilities in Canada or Mexico, with every viable port being within easy reach of American bombers. Even before the invasion force crossed the ocean, they would be sailing for ports that have been turned into rubble. Assuming that the U.S. didn't use naval aviation, which it definitely would, the invaders could opt for using ports in South America, well out of reach of most American bombers, and then simply move north to invade through Mexico. Moving through South America's poor rail and road infrastructure, though, would be a nightmare for yeah. the invaders, allowing We're plenty of time for the U.S. to simply mm -hmm. move too much work. forces through Mexico to Panama and then hold off the invasion there. If, miraculously, though the alliance did manage to land forces in Canada or Mexico, it would face a different tactical nightmare altogether. In Canada, the lack of suitable border crossings would force the invaders to spread out over a large area, or bottleneck and be subjected to endless attacks by American air power. In Mexico, military border crossings would be possible over a far larger area, but enemy forces would be moving through terrain that provided absolutely no cover. Mm -hmm. American air power would yep. once more devastate any invaders trying to move through the flat terrain of the U.S.-Mexico border. Geography alone provides the United States with near invulnerability from enemy invasion, but the logistics of the world's militaries proves why the U.S. simply Whoa. cannot be invaded. An invasion of the American homeland would rely on naval power to get the job done. And right off the bat, no nation on Earth, nor any combination of nations, has the firepower and logistical support needed to carry out such an invasion. The matter is one of historical necessity for the world. Ever since the end of the Second World War, all the world's major powers have had no need to project military power far from their own shores, except for the United States. The Soviet Union was chiefly concerned with securing its European borders, and in the case of a Third World War, its most vital strategic objectives could all be reached over land. The vitally important oil fields of the Middle East could all be taken via land routes through Afghanistan and Iran, and no navy was needed to hold off NATO forces in Europe. The same was true for Europe's NATO members. While once their mighty navies ruled the waves all over the world, their concerns in the 20th century quickly became resisting a possible Soviet invasion, and for that, no major naval power was needed. In the Atlantic, the Soviets hoped to slow the American response with the use of submarines, but ultimately knew that they could never stop the U.S. Navy and thus never seriously try. On the other side of the world, China struggles to turn itself into a first world power, and other than resentment towards Japan over its actions in World War II, China has had no real motivations to build a strong navy, at least until now. 
Much like the Soviet Union and Europe's NATO partners though, China definitely had no real reason to build a heavy sea lift capability in order to move thousands of troops and heavy equipment across the ocean. On the other hand, the United States is both blessed and cursed by geography. While it's untouchable to invasion thanks to the Atlantic and the Pacific, it also means that in order to project power on the world stage, America has always needed a strong navy. This is the reason that the U.S. has always had a very strong naval tradition, and why it has invested in naval and air transport more than any other nation on Earth. If U.S. troops want to get somewhere, after all, they're certainly not walking there. Hmm. To even but get some of their land the is also US, the ocean. invading army right. is going to need some serious sea lift capability, and no force on Earth comes even close to the U.S.'s 125 vessel military sea lift command, which operates a vast fleet of oilers, tankers, and heavy cargo transports. Yet, even this fleet is not enough according to some analysts, and plans are being called for that include dramatically increasing the capability of the U.S.'s military transport fleets. Wow. China has in recent years expanded its landing ship capabilities, with several dozen available to carry troops and heavy equipment. These ships, though, are not meant for global operations, and are only designed for cross-strait invasions into Taiwan, or to ferry supplies to China's illegal holdings and the artificial islands it built across the South China Sea. A crippling lack of support vessels such as oilers means that China cannot physically get its landing ships across the Pacific, though even if this problem were to be solved, the nation cannot hope to make a contested landing on foreign soil. <laughs> Again, this is because of China's lack of need for a global expeditionary military force. China's chief military concerns lie with a military invasion and forced repatriation of Taiwan, and thus it has not invested money into developing a true blue water navy. Russia has even less naval transport capability and support vessels, which again is a result of its military objectives being close to home. To compound the two nation sea lift problems, both nations have no dedicated amphibious assault ships capable of providing close air support and air superiority to landing forces on a contested beach. By comparison, the U.S. operates nine of these specialized vehicles, and they will soon be equipped with the F-35 stealth fighter. Projecting air power is in fact the biggest weakness for any nation hoping to invade the U.S., and China and Russia combined only operate two active duty aircraft carriers of extremely limited capabilities. Wow. Russia's infamous Admiral Kuznetsov very publicly had to be towed back to a friendly port after experiencing severe mechanical problems. Without adequate air power, neither nation could expect to secure a foothold on the U.S. mainland. America's air forces are twice as large as both nations combined, and its naval aviation alone is as large as Russia's total air power. If by some miracle either nation could get troops across the ocean to U.S. shores, the lack of air power would reduce the attempted landings to a suicide mission. In the end, not only could the U.S. protect from an invasion of the homeland, but it is currently and for the foreseeable future completely invulnerable to military invasion. Luckily, the U.S., China, and Russia have no desire to fight each other, and there exists no real reason to. Now that you've made it to the end of the video, why not keep learning about cool, awesome Whoa. stuff? Click on this video here, or... <sighs> that was pretty, uh... That's impressive. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, um... You know, like right at the end, that they mention that there's no real reason to fight no. each other at the moment. Yeah. But also, I, I I find it quite interesting how they didn't man uh, they didn't mention all the American citizens with guns as well. So it's like yeah. Once you get on the land, yeah. You don't actually you don't only have to fight the soldiers. You also have to fight the civilians. Yeah. Who are all you know who are armed. I guess the other question would be nuclear war. Yeah. Because that puts you in a different plane. Yeah, that, but that, that's completely different to invasion. Yeah. Invasion is like boots on the ground. Yeah. Getting in there. But also, I remember an interesting fact. I can't remember if I saw it in a previous video or one of you guys. In fact, I think quite a few of you guys were telling me in the comments. You were saying that um, the U.S. Air Force is obviously the biggest Air Force in the world. Mm. And the second biggest Air Force in the world is the U.S. Navy. Interesting. Yeah. So... The, not even the air forces of other countries yeah. can touch the navy of, of yeah, America. Still America. Yeah. So yeah. that's I think that's also another big reason. Yeah. So air power, I think America would just doesn't even come close. So you'd be feeling pretty safe if you lived in America. Yeah. Yeah. From outside forces. Yeah. Anyway, that was pretty cool, though, guys. Yeah, it was so cool. It was like so intense. I was just like. So much information, eh? Yeah, but it's it actually presented in quite a clever way. Yeah, it like is. Like the way you did all the transitions and everything. Yeah. It's quite like, keep, kind of keeps you glued to it. I don't even think we were saying much. No, we I know. I was like, just glued to like it. Like mesmerized by it. I love um, learning more about this and just like banking this information. It yeah. gives you a perspective of America 
that's different from the just the Hollywood stuff that we know. Yeah. So it kind of adds the, another level. The real of, life stuff. Yeah, of our knowledge of America. Yeah. All right, guys, and if you enjoyed that one, make sure you smash the like button. Comment down below and let us know some other videos similar to this one that we should be checking out. Also, yeah. we're, we're going to try and check out some more boot camp stuff as well. Yeah, we're send just us some links yeah. of the boot camps because we really enjoyed that last yeah, one. Yeah, it's hard to find other good videos yeah. on different um, you know, branches of the military. Uh, and also, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, yeah. as always. Yeah. And we love you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.